Welcome to today's discussion where we're going to talk about active transport. There are three types of active transport that you need to know about. The first one is molecular transport, the second one is endocytosis, and the third one is exocytosis. So let's start first of all with a review. Active transport is going to require energy to happen. Okay. For the most part, we're moving from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. We're trying to overload one side of the cell membrane with a lot more particles than the other side has. So let's take a look at the molecular transport. Now this is going to use your protein, pump, protein pumps. These are going to be your protein channels, sort of similar to the process of passive transport. These protein channels are going to help move things across the cell membrane. The difference is that these are going to require energy and they're actually going to have to pump that energy um, or pump those things into or out of the cell against the concentration gradient. Okay, so we're moving against the concentration gradient. So we're moving from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration to overload it. Think about if you had a um, if you had to actually pump something um, and use that energy, okay, you would have to plug a pump in, you actually have to pump something um, out of your house or out of somewhere. What you're doing is you're taking that and you're actually moving, um, using the energy to move whatever it is you're trying to get out, okay? So let's take a look at this. We have an overloaded concentration of molecules outside of the cell and we have very few inside of the cell. So you would think to, mean, to go to equilibrium, you would want materials to move inside the cell. But this is something that our cell does not want inside of our cells. Okay? Something that is either harming our cells or something that if we have too much of inside of our cells, it's going to cause issues. Like let's say some salts. Okay? Too many salts inside of our cells can cause an issue with um, can cause an issue with osmosis and, and all of that. So one of the things we, need, we might want to do is take and pump those salts out of the cell. So instead of moving from moving to the inside to make equal concentration, we're going to use energy. We have our protein pump right here. We're going to take this particle and this particle is going to move through and be pumped out of the cell. And we're just going to keep doing that until we eat, reach the amount and concentration of the substance that our cell says, okay, you can stop pumping this across the membrane because we have a good concentration in there. So our cells can control what happens and that pumping of those materials that it doesn't want in the cell can happen to the out of the cell. So this is our molecular transport through those protein pumps. There's two other types of transport. Endocytosis here is the first one. And if you look at the prefix here, endo, n as in enter means to go into. So what we're talking about here is moving something into the cell. And this is where we're using vacuoles or vesicles to actually move those particles into the cell. Our cell membrane here is in pink and we have this blue particle here that wants to move to the inside of the cell. It hits the outside of the cell membrane and the cell membrane says, hey, we need that. Okay? This cell needs that particle. So what's going to happen is your cell membrane is going to start folding in around this blue particle. As it folds in, it's forming that vacuole or vesicle and it's going to fully form and pinch off from the cell membrane and that vacuole is then going to move into the cell and take that particle to wherever it needs to go. So endocytosis is the movement of particles into the cell through a vacuolar vesicle. Okay. Exocytosis, on the other hand, is going to be just the opposite. Exo, the prefix ex, means out, as in exit. You're going to move something out of the cell. We're taking this particle. This particle isn't needed. It's in a vacuole or a vesicle. It's going to attach itself to the cell membrane and then it's going to throw it out of the cell and we have this um, particle that is now moved out of the cell through exocytosis. So active transport requires energy. It can use protein pumps to move things against the concentration gradient 
or we can use endocytosis and exocytosis to move particles through vacuoles and vesicles into and out of the cell.